You're listening to the Propane Fitness Podcast, your ultimate resource for fat loss and muscle gain with none of the gimmicks. With your hosts, Yusuf and Johnny. Simple rules, dramatic results. One, hello, welcome to episode 38 <laughs> of the Propane Fitness Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Today, <laughs> we're talking about five things that you can do to fill up the gaps in your day. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Are we just going to keep on recording? That's fine. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so... It's weird that... So, we're doing a video podcast now, because you still want to do a video podcast. Normally, when you record a video on your laptop or computer, you can see yourself. Mm. We can't see ourselves. It's just a little, just a green, little green light, light to let us know that we're being recorded. Speaking of dead time, so yeah, the the idea we want to discuss um, it's a influenced by an article that Yusuf wrote. Must be a year a ago. Long time ago. Um, seven. I'm going to blunder the title. seven effortless life hack substitute. It was a very buzz buzzfeedy title. Mm to trick you into getting some quality information. So um, it was mainly about filling up the, the dead time in your day that normally just contributes to additional stress. Mm. So I guess a good way to approach this then would be to go start at the beginning of the day and work through. Yeah. So number one, for me anyway, a large amount of my dead time happens in the morning. So especially if you work at a office or you know most jobs that have a defined start time probably the time between waking up and starting unless you literally cut it right down to the limit and you wake up with just enough time to like throw some breakfast down and get to work you've probably got a bit of dead time and something that you used to do a lot i suppose when you were dieting i've recently started doing more of is a morning walk like 20 30 minute walk in the morning um might seem like a bit of an odd suggestion, might also seem a little bit pointless, but there's a few reasons for it. So, do you want to say anything? Or is it? Yeah, so... I, mean, I can just, I could go off for 20 minutes on this, so... <laughs> it, it sounds um, pretty antisocial, and quite a lot of these tips are, are ways to stop people bothering you. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, the morning walk is a time that's, it's you time, you can sit and, well, you can't sit... You can walk and listen to a podcast, listen to whatever you want to do, or just have some time alone with yourself. If you're in the house, even if it's 30 minutes on your own, there's going to be um, the kids running around, whatever else it is. So just taking 30 minutes out straight away, outside, fresh air, wake up, um, burn some calories, possibly even pick up your groceries while listening to a podcast, um, whatever else. You're cramming quite a lot into... Yeah, yeah. And I think it really helps with just gaining a bit of focus, a bit of clarity. Something that I heard, I can't even remember who I heard it from, um, was this idea that most people wake up and just immediately start serving other people as soon as they're out of bed. Uh, And very, very rarely do they invest in themselves. And this idea of you wake up, maybe have breakfast, coffee, and then just go for a 20, 30 minute walk while listening to something that'll influence the way you think, or help you learn something new. Maybe you're like, you have a hobby that you're really interested in. Maybe you want to learn more about fitness, diet, nutrition, mindset. Um, It's an, it's an opportunity to expand your knowledge on something specific, completely separate to your work. Um, So yeah, it's something that I've started doing pretty consistently. And aside from all of those benefits, I've noticed a correlation. I cannot prove it, but between clients who are able to maintain higher than expected levels of calorie intake while maintaining lower levels than expected of leanness or body fat. And the thing that they do, those clients, is they have a ridiculously high step count. So a few of my clients have added me on Fitbit recently and make my average step count look woefully low. Um, One guy in particular has a step count that regularly exceeds 20, 22,000 just because the nature of his work is very manual. And he's able to keep his calories pretty high, even while he's, you know, trying to stay as lean as possible, a diet for a weight class. And he, he stays lean on a decent level of calories. And I'm, I'm convinced just because 
of the correlation I see between people who are able to do that and their step count that, I mean, you may, you may say that's obvious level of activity, but it's probably a level of activity that you don't necessarily count or think about. You know, it's not formal cardio. It's just general background stuff, activity. So, yeah. So, <laughs> if, so if you can achieve that while also, and this, as hippie as this sounds, like there's something very grounding about being in nature, mm. and especially like from waking up where you're just disoriented and just grounding yourself in greenery. Most people live within a few miles of a park or a field or something and being able to just immerse yourself in that straight away is phenomenal. I think the best moments of my life have actually been when I lived in Edinburgh next to Arthur's Seat, which is a mountain slash hill thing. And it's very, it's just right next to the city, very close to, uh, I, I don't know what defines a mountain or a hill, but... Um, a knoll? It could be a grassy knoll. It, it's more, knoll. Of a, more of a knoll. It, that, more than a more knoll. Than a knoll. So, um, yeah, within 20 minutes, you just suddenly from being in a city you're just in the cleavage of nature and you're just johnny's laughing at the word cleavage there um (laughs) it just instantly like wake up have some green tea or whatever go for a 30 minute walk listen to something um come back and just feeling great for the rest of the day so being able to do that we always talk about putting on your own oxygen mask before putting on others but you can then come back and serve others in a much more um happy place Mm. than if you just jump in and resent it because you're still getting your head together something within that actually that's a um this is just something else to try while you're on a morning walk i've something i've noticed is the people that you bump into before 8 a.m who are walking generally speaking are some of the happiest most like upbeat people i've come to come into contact with during your day it's because they've all just listened to the (laughs) Podcast episode 38. <laughs> but you know i think they all feel like they're they're winning a little bit don't they like they're up they're out before anybody else and they're walking something you can try is just making eye contact with people saying hello to people saying saying good morning i know that sounds like a weird thing to do but <laughs> you have lost it but how many times in your day do you actually speak to strangers and it's this idea of you flinch away from it because it feels uncomfortable but if you can deal with your flinch response get some low level activity in to help you maintain higher calorie intake while staying lean. And you're getting the mental benefits of being in nature, getting a bit of mental clarity and serving yourself first. And then you say, well, the action I have to take is just in the morning, put, probably should probably put on some clothes firstly, then some shoes. Especially um, if you're going to be making eye contact with people, like <laughs> definitely put the clothes on. Don't miss that step. Unless you're a horse sized duck. Yeah, then you're fine. Then it's different. You've got the military on you quite soon. <laughs> What's number two? So, so that so just speaking of flinch, um, that leads us into number two as well. So um, we often are very uncomfortable being with our own thoughts and we pacify ourselves just like a dummy with our phones. And we're both guilty of that. And one thing is that when you go to the toilet, that is you time. Like usually no one can bother you or, or be with you when you're having a poo unless you've got a really comfortable relationship with someone. So (laughs) what we do is we're so uncomfortable with sat there being with our own thoughts that we sat, we sit and scroll the Instagram feed or, or respond to texts or whatever it is. That is, um, that just means you've just got this continuous stream of thoughts coming into and out of the toilet and then back into what you were doing. And to sit and actually be with whatever's happening in your mind is, is uncomfortable at first, but it's a great opportunity just every day to have several little moments of, of just breath to focus when you're in the toilet. So great thing to do. So just treat the bathroom as a sacred space and uh, focus on your breathing when you're in there and treat it as you time rather than other people time <clears throat> where they can still access you through your pacifier. So I suppose leaving, just don't take your, don't take your phone to the toilet is, don't uh, take your phone is, to the is toilet. tip number one. And I think something that our... Um, one of our coaches said to us is during the day you want to be imagining your thoughts your mindset as a as a boiling kettle and you always want to leave it just shy of boiling so quite often especially if you work in a in a busy workplace or you're you're a knowledge worker and you're not necessarily building something and shipping it you're just dealing with incoming emails and requests and stuff to do you probably find during the day that you have these periods where stress creeps up on you you feel overwhelmed and people look for a way to disconnect. Ironically, 
the toilet is something, or going to the toilet is something that most people do pretty routinely, a couple of times a day. It's not something that you have to choose to do. It just has to happen. And what they do is they'll carry their phone into the toilet, maybe conduct business conversations with other people in the toilet. They're on Facebook, they're on Instagram, they're checking their emails. That is a perfect time to prevent the the kettle and the analogy from boiling and just using that as a, a stopgap between one task and the other or using it as a stopgap between feeling overwhelmed. One thing that the smokers have absolutely nailed is that mm. they, they get preferential treatment. They, they're allowed to go out for a little break every few minutes or every half an hour or so and just stand outside and yeah. just disconnect from where they are. And most people, when they have a cigarette, that's a pacifier in itself, so they don't need their phone. They're actually just standing and being present with the cigarette. Yeah, smoking's not great, but you can use that same principle in the toilet. So The way to enhance that as well is just drink more water. So you, you drink more water, you need to go to the toilet more, get more time to meditate, be with your thoughts, get a bit of space, and then probably, not only are you improving your hydration, hydra, 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 hydration, <laughs> hydration etc., but you're also affording yourself a little bit more mental clarity and space, which should hopefully improve your efficiency and effectiveness during the day, which will therefore allow you to leave early and then everything just becomes sunshine and rainbows almost instantly. So No one's ever going to give you grief for going to the toilet as well. Like it's it, Unless you work in a Chinese factory or something like, wow. and you're being <laughs> clocked for it, then you're... <laughs> they might be like, oh... Like, Johnny goes to the toilet an awful lot. Yeah, worst, worst case scenario. I think, oh, I drink a lot of water. I so. think you could, um, for want of a better term, take the piss. With All right. it, <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> yeah, you go to the toilet. <laughs> so what you said, incredible. Um, if you go to the toilet every sort of 10, 15 minutes, then maybe revise the amount of water you're drinking. But I think you get the picture. So when I when I used to work in finance, I actually like I am. This is weird, so maybe don't do this. But I also um, think you should say this. Really? <laughs> well, we started now. People are gonna be like, "Oh, come on." Um, I I didn't eat during the workday. I used to follow an intermittent fasting approach just because it suited my schedule a bit better. <clears throat> um, and so my lunch times were free, but I didn't want to just sit at the desk. So I just go into the disabled toilet, put the lid on the toilet, and just sit on there meditate for 40 45 minutes um it was often awkward if like someone sees you come out after having been there for a long time but (laughs) also you're not disabled that's true but there was no one disabled in the building so i think they just how do i know i've got him (laughs) i love how you clarify that you put the lid down because if you didn't put the lid down it would be the literally the weirdest thing (laughs) So, so yeah, insight into Yusuf's life there. Yeah, on to number three before this gets more weird. Mm. Um, between sets, when you're in the gym, you can't just bash out all of your sets. Even if you try and superset things, you're going to be gassed or whatever. So there is two to three minutes between each heavy set that you're not doing anything. That's something that you can capitalize on as well. Johnny, what are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, well, I, you, you often see... It's this idea of, of Parkinson's law that if you have 40 minutes to get a training session in, you'll probably get three quarters of the volume done in that in that unit of time. Whereas often, because we end up in, you know, and while if you want to talk to people at the gym, that's fine. But generally you see people taking like 10 minutes or, or longer sometimes between heavy sets on their phone, talking, changing the song, all these kinds of things. And it does just become more of a time sink or more of a commitment than it should be and so stuff you can do with those rest periods is firstly you could consider even and this is something we only recommend for the sake of improving your efficiency with training but you could actually try and time your rest periods for a while at least to just to ensure that you're maintaining a decent pace Um, beyond that you could use the time in between sets more efficiently so you're not just sat checking your phone or, or getting in this conversations that you maybe don't want to be part of, um, such as, excuse me, do you take creatine? That kind of thing. Um, so you can stretch, stretch like antagonistic muscles, for example, or something that's unrelated. So while I bench, for example, I try and set time to stretch hip flexors, piriformis, foam roll, um, muscle groups for the next day's training session. So it won't interfere with the movement yeah. that you're doing. Yeah. So that, I mean, stretching the actual muscle that you're training is is often linked to a, to a drop in performance 
it probably isn't the best thing to do, especially if you're squatting that to try and open your hips between heavy sets just isn't, you know, you don't want to be affecting um, piriformis psoas and, and hip flexors that are going to, that are responsible for controlling where your knee is, for example, or, you know, how your hips rotate, etc. when you're between sets. It's maybe not the best idea. So if it's an assistance movement and you're focusing on hypertrophy, you can do a few things to improve your mind muscle connection. So if you're not bothered about the load that you're lifting, so you're doing seated dumbbell press in between your sets, you can do some very light partial lateral raises with your eyes closed, really focusing on hitting the target muscle group. You can also just close your eyes and just, just try and get in touch with the muscle that you're training. Um, so you've got stretching. You can also do some activation. So if you're between sets of your squats, you can do some glute activation movements, very light, again, not accumulating fatigue, just making sure that you're getting the right movement pattern um, and also things like trying to focus on bracing and engaging your abs. As we said as well, the, scrolling the feed is kind of the default option and we just do it as a matter of like, oh, well, this is, but it's, it's never satisfying. You know, it never is, but the the decision of like, what do I do instead is always too difficult. So we just default to that. So I think just knowing that these are the things that you can do and having a defined plan for it takes away that temptation um and i've never come away from scrolling a, a news feed of anything thinking like you know what that was that was deep it's really changed my life yeah, yeah. <laughs> if anything it's it's stressful Sapping. um yeah, yeah. and I, I know that it's very popular and trendy to talk about you know how phones are taking over our lives and stuff like that you know i don't think we're we're that extreme but certainly when your default go-to when you're bored or don't have something immediately in front of you to take your focus and you just scroll through Facebook or scroll through Instagram pointlessly just to get bombarded with notifications, messages, things grabbing your attention when actually that time could be used really effectively or efficiently, even if it is supersetting muscle muscle groups that don't affect each other. So antagonistic sets or if you're doing squats, maybe you can bring some of your upper body face pulls, bicep curls, tricep pushdowns and do that between sets of squats or deadlifts. That's the final most obvious option as yeah. well. And, and we have a lot of people, um, a lot of our clients that do that. If they're squashed into a time, uh, it, they have got a limited time to train, they'll just bring forward some of their assistance movements, face pulls and squats, great example. Mm. Um, you know, dumbbell bench and chest supported row, things like that. Even that is actually some crossover. But if you can do like calves and shoulders superset, they're not going to interfere at all. Something that I've recently started programming with some of my clients is is density work. So um, a unit of time, so 10 minutes, five minutes, and then a specified load, and then a specified rep cap. So as many reps as you can possibly achieve with a given load in this fixed amount of time. And without fail, the, the reaction from these clients is, you know, I can't believe how efficient this feels. I can't believe how much work I'm able to get done in that five minutes or in that 10 minutes. If I'd said to them, go and do 70 reps with those dumbbells, bet you it would have taken them 20, 30 minutes just because mm -hmm. they convinced themselves that they need more rest than they maybe actually do, or they get distracted. And just placing a time limit on the, the, the exercise helps improve efficiency. So if you struggle with all of this stuff, but you find that you're spending two hours or longer in the gym for something that should be taking an hour, you could set yourself a total session time or time your rest periods either one will work to improve your efficiency and then once you're doing that look at ways to fill the gaps that you are sat reaching for your phone to check facebook etc and um, stretch breathing things that are more efficient and productive when you've got open rest times as well it does just bleed out into as long as <clears throat> as long as it can take and also if you're doing a 10 minute as many reps as possible it gives you a great excuse for when someone comes up to you and asks if you're on creatine <laughs> to say sorry i'm on a 10 minute timer and just carry on with the session it actually, happens quite a lot to us we get people yeah talk, and it's, it's great but sometimes if you're on a time limit it's difficult to in, get all the work done in my gym there's two two clients that i train who vaguely know each other we're in the gym at the same time and there was a lady who um had a bit of a crisis with a squat bar so I think she like couldn't rack one side of it or um, the plate started slipping. And one of the guys who was further away rushed over to help. And uh, he said to the other, the guy who was nearer, you know, what were you doing? Why didn't you help? And he was like, I'd have loved to, but I was on a, 
a, a time density set with dumbbell row. Like I just, I just, I just <laughs> so maybe if someone's at uh, risk of injury and uh, there's some kind of emergency, if the building's on fire, you can maybe relax the the rules a little bit. I think try try and finish your set. Try and finish your set. <laughs> you, you or your ten minutes. And uh, <laughs> so one one thing that I'm just going to include in the show notes on the website is uh, a video of Johnny being spotted without asking and getting a uh, wet wet tissue draped over his face as he sat up which is uh, a source of great entertainment great. for me i think we should also include the video of you getting <laughs> you said benching and like explaining beforehand please like, don't touch the bar like unless i'm dying um and then the guy proceeds to touch every single rep while yusuf's going no 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 <laughs> okay we'll it's include, excellent we'll include that as well for, for a treat number four is driving um, again, huge sink of dead time uh, if we look at the number of miles that you accumulate throughout the year. So, number one, most obvious one, podcast, audio book. I know Johnny's got a, you've got an account with Audible. Is that yeah, right? yeah. So Audible is um, a great thing about it. Actually, is you pay a monthly fee, which is a little bit annoying, um, but you can accumulate for every month you accumulate a credit. So if you if it takes you longer than a month to listen to a book in the in your car, you can accumulate some credits. Pause your account, hold the credits in Audible. So you basically have, you're basically banking that money and you're saying, I'm going to use that money for purchasing books. And it's almost like a way of, I don't know, ring fencing it off so you don't use it on um, cappuccino and muffins and stuff like that or whatever else you like buying. Um, but yeah, you can, it then allows you to download pretty much any book, to be honest, in, in audio format. You can speed it up so you can listen to it at like 1.25 or 1.5 times the speed. And it's just a, great way of getting through lots of content that is stuff that is relevant or interesting to you and uh a lot of people that when i was working in in finance i knew a lot of people who said i wish i had time to read i wish i had time to you know read fiction or learn about this or develop my understanding i remember during that time you were pounding through the books (laughs) (laughs) yeah i mean for, for a period of time i was reading at least a book a week or listening to at least a book a week um and while it's maybe not ideal to the extent that, especially if you're reading a book that is um, non-fiction, so there's stuff in it you want to actually action or take away, you can't really take notes. Um, but other than that, you know... So it, much better than the absolute drivel of like capital FM. Oh, you know, goodness just me. Having yeah. to listen to that. So, um, yeah, I, I've been meaning to get around to getting an Audible account for a while, but because I have currently got this backlog of other things, so I use an app called TubeX, which is... Um, a YouTube player basically and it allows you to play the audio when the screen is off on your phone so you can collect a playlist of lectures there's quite a lot of audio books just on YouTube as well so yeah. um, listen to them through TubeX and then once I've run out of that then I'm considering getting up with a Audible account too I think even even just podcasts you know TED Talks are, are available in audio um, like the uh, Freakonomics podcast is a great like, so much content very general yeah. So if you, if you don't want to spend on a monthly subscription, like there's still a mm. repository of stuff to still... Some, just some suggestions, because again, while also listening to audiobooks, I was also listening to an awful lot of podcasts. So I would listen to, I think the Tim Ferriss show is is up there with probably some of the best podcast content I've ever heard. Um, his mission with that is he, he's trying to dissect high performance in any area. So he interviews... Um, you know, top performers in all areas of life. So he's got like Mike Shinoda from Linkin Park to Elon Musk, like literally anybody in any field you can think of, he's got them. And he asks them the same set of questions such as, um, you know, what does the first hour of your day look like? And then he has some some essays that he reads. That's fantastic. Freakonomics, Mark Bell's Powercast, um, Propane Fitness Podcast is probably the, the best one I think I've ever heard actually. Better than Tim Ferriss. Um, what else? Barbell Shrugged. You know, there's, there's loads of um, fitness-specific ones, and then it depends, obviously, what your interests are. Cool. So we've covered listening to stuff while driving. The next thing <laughs> is um, my, just mindful driving. You, you often find that people always use the analogy of, like, <clears throat> you get out of the car and you don't know how you got there. Like, the, the autopilot just kicked in. And quite often, our very, like, visceral reptilian um, instincts come in when you're driving. I don't know why. Like, when you're a pedestrian and someone's walking slowly in front of you, you don't, like, shout at them and like swear at them and stuff but when you're in this little pod of a car all those instincts come in so it's a great um opportunity to focus on mindful driving and another video we're going to include in the show notes 
is a compilation of British drivers swearing <laughs> um, from the from the dashboard cameras, and that is absolutely incredible. But it illustrates the point perfectly. It just shows how we're just suddenly on this autopilot defensive mode mm. when we're driving. So it's a great opportunity to just focus on um, on that and use it as a mindfulness practice. And then you two birds with one stone. You don't have to then have a dedicated meditation practice sitting in the morning if you haven't got time. This can work just as well. So again, you know, the number of people who are like, I don't have time to meditate, but they'll spend 40 minutes in the car every morning. Um, if you were able to get your, your practice so that your focus was completely on the driving for the full 40 minutes, I guarantee you'd feel very different when you got to work. Um, quite often, that entire time in the car is spent thinking about when you get to work, which when you think about it really logically is a completely backwards practice because you're just extending your day longer than it needs to be. Arriving at work more stressed and yeah. you're, you'd get... 70 80 percent of the benefits of a dedicated sitting practice yeah. doing mindful driving it's so, also interesting like if you actually sit and, and pay attention to the intricacies of, of driving somewhere <laughs> surreal there's a lot going on like and uh you know you can open the window listen to sounds where's your oyster really <laughs> you the... can play with the handbrake you know um, while you're while you're stationary of, of course yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> even while you're stationary like don't just play with the handbrake um yeah. next thing play with intention yeah, yeah. fine <laughs> Next thing is dashboard camera, and that's another way to... So I, I've just bought one, so I'm trying to um, justify my purchase, really. But having a dashboard camera, all of the reviews say I became a lot more mindful of my driving when I knew that it was being recorded. So that's just one way to kind of say, look, here is... Um, so, so actually, an interesting analogy of... You may, you may see a lot of religious practices and religious people have a hat, or wear like a prayer hat, and... <laughs> the, the, where I'm going with this is that have you got a camera in your hat <laughs> just sticking up <laughs> apparently the idea behind that is to create an awareness of the top of the head at all times so that you've got a point of focus so the hat is actually a functional thing and so having a, a dashboard camera also just keeps you aware that if I lose control or if I go into autopilot mode I'm being recorded I'm being watched and it's a very different experience is that why you bought it more for insurance I, I, more for the youtube potential oh, I'm, 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 I'm ho hopefully the, the propane channel you're going to see some uh, hilarious driving and me swearing at people and completely going against any of the advice in this podcast it's the same analogy i think as filming your sets like if you film yourself squatting you're automatically held even though nothing is different in the room perfect you're held analogy. to a higher standard aren't you like you're worried more about depth you're worried more about setup. You're worried more about how fast the bar moves. And, uh, it, you know, in the same, if you were to film every exercise, every gym session you ever did, I guarantee you'd work a lot harder. So in the same way, um, you'd also probably be a lot more, more mindful. So Absolutely. having this third eye watching you, I suppose, is a, is a beneficial thing. So, yeah, film your sets as well. Bonus tip. <laughs> film your sets, film your driving and uh, play with the handbrake. Those are the top tips. There we go. I should mention that we do, the reason we keep looking over here, we're not, like, practicing our ro tor torso rotation just to the left side we have a list over here why we didn't put the list on the desktop i'm not really sure yeah we, we're just incapable of remembering five things so uh, <laughs> so number five evening Is, routine oh yeah see forgot Dear me. um yeah so i think morning and evening for most people either side of work is like a bit of a sink of just sedating with something so in the morning quite often and I've been guilty of this. You wake up, you kind of go on autopilot, you shower, you maybe you probably check your emails, check Facebook, go downstairs, coffee, cereal, check Facebook, check email, get in the car, sit and think about work, get to work, stressed, come home. <laughs> and then the, the evening is just kind of sedating as well. So again, you spend time on your phone, maybe watch some, some TV that you're not that engaged in while you're on your phone. Maybe you'll, um, you know, eat, while you're watching it, watching the film or something like that, you know, it's all these kind of semi pseudo focus practices that we don't really get the intended benefit out of. And really a, a, the best way, in my opinion, to spend your evening is treat it as time that is dedicated specifically to decompress and relax. And really if, if watching a film or watching TV or spending time with loved, one, loved ones is what you want to do is being on your phone or doing something else at the same time actually helping you or making it worse. So I think for the evening, it's it's just doing things with intention. So it doesn't matter if that's playing on the Xbox, watching the football, 
watching Love Island, whatever it is you want to do, as long as you're doing that with the sole focus of like, I love doing this, so I'm just going to do this for half an hour. I'm just going to do this for an hour. That's a great way to, to spend time in our opinion. And then something that I've started doing as a replacement habit, because I was getting sucked into, um, you know, watching, watching Netflix before bed or watching TV before bed. I've just replaced that directly. And I've not been doing this long, granted, but replacing it with reading fiction is a great way to firstly get away from the temptation of screens and technology. And then also it's just completely transports you into another world. And I often find you fall asleep while thinking about the story. It's in itself very relaxing. So that's something else to try as well. So a lot of these tips are actually quite raw for us because whenever we make content like this, it's as much a reminder to ourselves as it is for you. Mm. And uh, these, these have come about from realizing that mindless scrolling of the news feed is not a productive use of time um going to like working until 1 a.m and then just crashing out and waking up later because you're tired is not a good way to do it and that to actually set not just a bedtime but one hour before that a kind of begin wind down time yeah. so if let's say your bedtime is 11 p.m 10 p.m should be right screens off begin spending half an hour with family or and half an hour stretching or um, whatever it is like especially screen time off I think that's, the, that's yeah. the key thing because screen time means online time means people can access you people can pull on your attention and people can add commitments onto what you need to do and that's just going to create a background hum of stress it's very I think both morning and evening are both times where you're it's very tempting to get sucked into the, the social media loop isn't it or the, the email loop of uh your phone will buzz and you immediately want to check it or you wake up and you think, oh, I might have some emails or I might have some notifications or some things that need my attention. And if you spend that time away from your phone, if you spend the evening away from your phone, away from your laptop, iPad, whatever it is you check, then probably you'll find that the time that you do allow to those things in your day during the day when you're at work becomes more efficient because you're aware of those boundaries, you're aware of those deadlines. So a bit of a bit of an expansion into just general productivity there, but I think really look at where the dead time is in your day and think, what can I do instead that instead of making my day frustrating or worse can make me better and help me expand my knowledge, my understanding or manage my stress. Combination of those things will free up probably several hours of stuff that you may have thought I don't have time to do. Reading, podcasts, stretching, meditating, like those are all stuff that we put on the back burner because we think we haven't got time and being able to then stack up those habits is and, and suddenly you end up getting hours of meditation reading several books a day stretching for 20 30 minutes every single day training <laughs> takes less time you feel less stressed more productive you know so just being intentional with your time is a, a massive shift that will improve everything that you do and hopefully just enhance the way you feel about your day and your life i suppose living the dream living the dream so that's it for propane podcast episode 38 so you can catch the show notes and the three videos that we referenced definitely recommend watching them uh, on the website for um show notes also subscribe to our email list and you'll get updates and a free ebook 22 simple rules for dramatic results otherwise speak to you next time